transform you if you let it in it'll cover you and carry you turn you away no party no no celebration no party just problems from the day he was anointed david had problems if i was to put his anointing ceremony in the record books, I would have to put an asterisk by it from David because an asterisk means that the record has been tainted some type of way. The footnote would explain why. Why are you saying this, Pastor? Because number one, there was no name on the invitation. If it's your ceremony, wouldn't you expect for your name to be on the program? Amen. Number two, it seems like they were trying to know everybody except them. Mm -hmm. Only to have the oil run down his head. David was minding his own business, tending to the sheep. And before he knew it, he was anointed all king of Israel. Now, his brothers were jealous because they were not anointed. Mm -hmm. How do you know this, Pastor Jay? Because in the scriptures, you got to pay attention. Yeah. Write this down. Pay close attention to people who don't clap when you win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. You try to get to Pay very close especially when they call themselves friends uh, who don't clap when you win. There was no party All right. for this family member. There was no high five, no fist bump, no body bumps, no nothing. The Bible said that Samuel, when he finished, went back to Rama. And David went back to Tim. Yeah, to the sheep. No celebration, just adoration. Mm. What do you do when God has touched you with his finger of love mm. and you have nobody to share it with? Mm. All right. Anointed but alone. Mm. Talented, but you're talked about. You're special, but you're shunned by people. Mm. What do you do when you're, you're gifted by God but hated by me? This is the situation that David found himself in since the day he was anointed. Our text has us in the city of Gath, where David is running from for his life. He's running from King Saul. Yeah. <coughs> Two miles from the city of Gath is a maze of hills and valleys and caves. And one of those caves stood near the city of Adullam. And David found refuge in that cave. It was his hideout. At the time, David had to be discouraged. I'm anointed all king of Israel, and I find myself on a run as a caveman. All right. First, understand that your anointing does not give you immunity from challenges of life. All right. I'm talking about church folks. You know you are anointed. Mm -hmm. Yes, you go to church, you pay your tithes, you carry a big Bible. But it does not exempt you from having problems. Mm -hmm. And now that you are in the cave, you feel like life has dealt you a bad thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Why? Because you are anointed. But let Pastor preach this morning. I'm going to tell you that there are blessings oh. in the cave. Uh, oftentimes we ignore the blessings because of our circumstances. We're so busy looking at our circumstances that we don't see the blessings. All right. That's because we see blessings as God always giving us something. We treat God like a sugar daddy. If you're not giving me something, then you must not love me. All right. Now, Sometimes the blessings is not what God gives you. All right. It's what he allows the enemy not to do to you. Amen. Amen. 
Sometimes the blessing is that God had to hide you in a cave. Uh, huh. Dispatched in the dark. He had to keep you. Why? Because you couldn't keep yourself. That's right. In That's right. chapter 22, verse 1, the Bible said David escaped mm -hmm. to the cave. Watch this, Brother Mark and I. It didn't say he ran. Okay. The Bible said that David escaped to the cave. Come see, Joseph ran from part of his wife. Okay? There, there's a lot of people that ran. Adam and Eve ran when they got put out the garden. Hmm. But to escape means something had a hold on you. And if you didn't get away, your life was hanging in the balance. So the Bible said that David escaped to the cave. Now the cave, watch this y'all, isn't a bad place. Right. The cave is where you gain strength. Mm -hmm. The cave is where you get away from crazy folk. Mm -hmm. uh, let me try it like this. Yes, they're crazy. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be crazy when you come out the cave. Mm -hmm. So that means the cave is designed to help you deal with crazy folks. The cave is where you think, where you get your exit plan and exit strategies, where you talk to God and listen to God. The cave is where your hiding place is, where he had to separate you from subtle attacks. Folks who you call friends and family members. Mm -hmm. All right. God had to start growing you in the cave just so you can stay alive. Mm -hmm. A woman goes through nine months of childbirth. Mm -hmm. That means that at some point, what's inside of her is too big. And it starts growing and it has to come out. Mm -hmm. That's the same way with us. And you won't stay in the cave forever. At some point, your maturity level psychologically, mentally, you, you start to form all this strength and then it'll be time for you to come out. Oh, but all of this happens in the cave. Yeah. Watch the movies of text. In the cave, he is trying to get you to be in his life. Mm. What does that mean? That means that it was in the dark when God first showed us his power. He said, let there be. Yeah. While he was in the dark. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to show us that even in dark places, you need to speak those things that be not as though they already are. Well, well. You didn't know how to be creative and innovative until you got into the cave. Right. Now, you began to make up stuff that don't make sense. Hmm. You start thinking about things that don't exist, you learn how to survive in such a way that nobody ever thought of. All right. And you can't. Okay. I, I'm going to speak to some cave saints here in a moment. Uh, <laughs> my wife would say it like this. Your downtime is your prep time. Your darkness is your development. The, the dark place is your workspace. Uh -huh. And it all happens in the cave. You have to be so good at accepting where you are that the cave becomes your safe space. Oh, yeah. All right. yeah. There is one thing I must tell you. That the cave allows you to do things on your own because people can't interrupt you. Okay? Maybe y'all don't understand that. Because I have so many people around me all the time. I value my time alone. All right. Well, you're right about that. Hmm. I, I, I preach to hundreds. Uh -huh. I have a job. A lot of employees, business, everybody. Uh -huh. But when it comes to me and myself, I have to get alone and read the Bible so that I can get strength. Amen. And not just preach a sermon. Amen. So it's in the dark place where I gain my strength. And watch this, y'all. 
Nobody in the caves can take credit for your work. If you learn to shut your mouth, because yeah. some of us love coming out of the cave telling everybody what we're up to. Yeah. If you stay in that cave yeah. and work the way God wants you to work, uh -huh. you don't have to worry about nobody taking credit for your work. Can I tell you again? Watch this. You don't have to listen to people's negative opinion about you Come on with it. when you're in the cave. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. Nobody can judge you. In the cave. In the, cave. Huh. the author doesn't say that David ran. He said that he escaped because Saul, King Saul, was trying to take his life. Can I teach you something? No. If the people who don't like you are above you, no. then you're a threat to them. Well. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got two okay. Let's start another one. If the people below you don't like you, all right. uh, you consider arrogant. Mm -hmm. This means that you must calm down on folks. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. Everybody below you, you treat like trash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to treat people right. right. Yeah. Malcolm S. Forbes said it like this, the former senator of New Jersey. Watch this. You can easily judge the character of a man by how he treats those who can do nothing for you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Do you even know the janitor's name? Yeah. Mm. The person who cleans up around yeah. the office. Do you even speak to him? Yeah, yeah. Okay? The person who's checking out your groceries, do you ask them how their day is going? Yeah. Yeah. Do you treat people like trash when they're not on you? You're all right. Hmm. All right. You watch this, okay. Now let's go to your left. Stay here for a moment. All right. If the people on your level don't like you, that must mean that you are annoying. <laughs> you complain too much. You never satisfy. You always stuck in your way. You always have something negative to say. Zig Ziglar. That great philanthropist said this, be grateful for what you have and stop yes. complaining. It bores everyone around you and it won't solve any problems. Yes. We got some folks who come sit next to you in church, not, not this church. <laughs> <laughs> Complain about everything. And it's always the people on your level. Okay? So people who are anointed typically encounter either hate or resentment because of where God has placed them mm. in their lives. Right. So, it's proof that your attitude would destroy your anointing and rob you of the favor of God. Amen. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Okay, watch this, watch this. We know that God gives his gifts without repentance. That's no doubt. Mm -hmm. But he'll take away the anointing. That's it. So you can preach, but you'll have no power. No <laughs> you can teach, but you'll have no power. No or you can sing, but it won't move anybody. Right. Why? Because he has moved his anointing because of your bad attitude. Right. You know somebody say, preach, young man, preach. Oh, oh, God. God. Oh, I will. <laughs> this is why anointed people should be the last ones to get jealous. All right. Because it's the criticism to God that you don't like where you are. Hmm. A clear biblical pattern is that jealousy will follow an anointing. Amen. Attacks will follow an anointing. Mm -hmm. So the day David was anointed, he became a target. Yes, he was. But with God's grace, you can overcome and stay faithful to anything that the devil tries to come up with. Right. Right. If you are jealous of the people next to you on your level, uh -huh. that must mean that you're threatened by them. Uh -huh. Insecure people make it their business to find fault in others. Mm. This is why insecure people find it hard to get along with other folks. Amen. Because they are always trying to put themselves up and push other people down. Amen. But if the people above you are jealous of you, uh -huh. 
-huh. that shows your anointing. Mm -hmm. right. They conspire against you. They want to stop your creativity. They want to just stifle your credit. They are threatened by your presence. Uh -huh. This is proof that God is working on you. Oh. Watch this. The scriptures say, and from Nod, he went to Gath, and from Gath, he went to King Ahish. Mm -hmm. I got a problem with this. The reason why I got a problem with this is because David killed Goliath. Goliath was from Gath. And now David is seeking refuge in Gath. Okay, maybe y'all didn't get that way. Okay. He arrives to seek refuge from those who don't like him. All right. <laughs> Amen. He arrives and as soon as he arrives, they recognize him. All right. Yeah. Watch what the king of Gath said. I know you. Uh -huh. You're the king of our Israel. Mm -hmm. And you're the rival to Saul. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. Y'all ready for the problem? He is not the king of all Israel. That's it. He's only been anointed. That's it. That's it. Did y'all see it there? Watch, watch this there. You, you, you know that God is at work in your life when your anointing is higher than your appointment. Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't have a type, but they're still threatened by you. Uh -huh. It would take almost 20 years and 20 chapters for David to take his position. But right after an anointing, everybody knew that you must be the one. Uh -huh. <laughs> The fact that King Achish saw him as the king is a testimony to his anointing. Now, during these years, David knew that he hadn't got the appointment, but he knew that he was anointed. So when your anointing is waiting on your appointment, sometimes you can second guess your own call. Yeah. How long, Lord, will you allow my enemies to triumph over me? That's what David would say. Yeah. They would say, hear my cry, O oh Lord. He was doing this because he was anointed, but he doesn't have the appointment. Mm -hmm. Now, your anointing doesn't always mean an instant appointment. Mm -hmm. Because God has to put you in a cave just so he can get you ready That's right. for the appointment. Wow. Can I go there? Go there. Go there. He's down in his end. And the Jewish commentators tell us this, Pastor Johnson, that even King Achish is going to kill him himself right. or hand him over to Saul so that Saul can be in debt to him. Amen. One or two things don't happen. And every time it happens, when somebody comes to the king, either I'm going to kill you myself, there's only two choices, or I'm going to hand you over for a ransom. Amen. There was no third choice. So don't be looking for it. Mm -hmm. But David, out of character, the Bible said, I want y'all to see this, 1 Samuel 21, verse 11, mm -hmm. he pretended to be insane in their presence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he started marking on the doors mm -hmm. and letting spit come down in his feet. Uh -huh. The boy started acting crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> For his own survival, he started acting crazy. Amen. I'm still not getting it. I got to go with y'all. Just to keep the enemy from killing him, the boy did something crazy. Amen. Do I have anybody in here who ever did something crazy Amen. just so you can survive? Amen. I got to go with Anybody in here ever work three jobs and left their kids at home by themselves yeah, just so you can get ahead? Yeah, Somebody yeah. said, that's crazy. That's oh, crazy. you did that to survive. Yeah. Watch this. You ever taught a seven-year-old how to iron? Yeah. Somebody said, that's crazy. <laughs> you ever taught a six-year-old how to cook for him and his sisters? Oh, somebody said, that's crazy. Oh, uh, yeah, you ever taught a nine-year-old how to give insulin shots? Somebody wow. said, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, you ever taught a 10-year-old how to babysit so that mama can go to work and walk on the phone like a man? Somebody said, that's crazy. But you did it to survive. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sometimes, sometimes, this is what I heard, I heard. Sometimes you have to be crazy just to get the enemy off your back. Yeah. Okay, okay. Chapter 22, verse 1. The Bible said David escaped 
So before you get all depressed about where you are now, I want you to look back over the hills of Gap and remember what God delivered you from. God, I thank you that the intended expectation did not happen. I escaped. Do I have anybody who escaped it? Okay, maybe. Here's proof that I escaped. I got a good job now. All my kids are doing good. Uh, we have transportation. We have good insurance. And I'm not getting any child support. Somebody say, I escaped. I, I escaped. escaped. <laughs> I was supposed to be dead sleeping in my grave. But I escaped. It should have been worse than it was before. But I escaped. Yeah, I know I lost some stuff. But. I'm not even supposed to be here. Do you understand that I escaped? <sighs> I'm looking for my escape saints. What my escape saints are? Okay. Amen. Yes, I wanted something back. But I'm so glad that I have what I had. That's an escape saint. Yes, sir. Yeah, I lost some stuff. Yes. Yeah, I may be broke, but all my bills paid. Somebody say I'm divorced, but now I have my peace. I've been diagnosed, but I'm still in the land of living. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say, preach, young man. Preach. Yeah. Yeah. I'm crying all day, but I'm sleeping good at night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well. I'm going to get a job, but I have confidence. I lost some friends, but I found Jesus. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm yeah. escaped. Yeah. So don't miss the blessing. Because of the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let your problems override your promise. Well, uh -huh. right now. Cave activity can make you look crazy. You, don't know. you have to learn to celebrate in the cave. Yeah, yeah we, we don't get a break from serving just because we're going through. You serving and praising don't have nothing to do with your circumstance. Yeah, you, know. yeah you, you don't get an excuse absent just because you got some problems and some issues. <laughs> yeah, you have to make serving more important than your sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Can I teach you? Yeah. God sent some men down today. At first, I got excited. 400 men. Hmm. I said to myself, but have they found it? Oh, it's on now. Yeah. Because, see, I'm from the project. You give me 400 men with me, oh, it's on. It's a problem. Right. <laughs> I ain't nobody. <laughs> okay. wow. But in verse 2, I found out what kind of men All right. came to his aid. Yeah. The Bible said all those who were distressed, mm -hmm. all those who were in debt, mm -hmm. and all those who were discontent mm -hmm. gather around him. And he became their command. Time out, time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. You mean to tell me there's not one normal person amongst the 400? Everybody broke? Everybody mad? Everybody unsatisfied? I can't get one person in their right mind? All of them came to David. Okay. This must have been an act of God. Because God sent these men here. Watch this. Uh -huh. I believe these 400 rejects, 400 misfits, uh -huh. 400 people who were broke, busted, and disgusted. Uh -huh. The Bible said he became their leader. Uh -huh. So originally I thought that they came out of him to fight. I, I really did. Uh -huh. Until I started reading the scriptures. Uh -huh. Because this was not true, because, watch this out. They didn't even know how to fight. No. <laughs> they can't even throw a rock. <laughs> so why are you there? Hmm. How do you know this preacher? Because first seven, watch this, 23. But David's men said to him, look, we are afraid in you. Mm -hmm. Okay, stop right there. We're going to fight. Yeah. They said, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we are afraid. We scared. 400 scary folk? Oh my. I can't stand one scary person. <laughs> <laughs> and I got 400 folks on my side who won't even put up their dudes. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. I, I might have 
Everybody's with me by myself. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then that's, that's me. That's, that's me. That's me. That's me. Okay. They didn't come to help David fight. No, they didn't. They came to be with David because they needed help from David. Uh -huh. Their survival was predicated on his deliverance. That's it. If David don't make it, we all in trouble. Yeah. If you go down, we all go down. Okay, okay, watch this, watch this. Here's the problem. I'm talking to anointed folks. You don't know anyone in your family. You have people riding on your deliverance. Uh -huh. All 400 of them are waiting on your recovery. Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. knows what to do. Uh -huh. That's why they're called dependents. Mm -hmm. They depended on you yeah. to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. Now here's the problem. David needs help mm -hmm. himself. Oh, yeah. That's how you know you're anointed. Whenever people need help from you, and they can't provide you any help, then you must be the chosen one. Wow. Wow. You're the leader because they need you. Mm -hmm. Now, Colin Powell said this. The day the soldiers stop bringing you their problem mm -hmm. is the day that you stop being their leader. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. He said because either they lost confidence in you, that you can help them, mm -hmm. or either you don't care. Either way, you're not the leader anymore. Yeah. So David had a problem. The Bible said that David, watch this, verse 4, left him in the cave. He went to Moab. Mm -hmm. And he said, do me a favor. King H. Yeah. Take care of my family. Mm -hmm. Take care? Yes, it. That's it. You try again. You got 400 biscuits. You got it. David said, I'll be back. He goes to King H in Moab. He said, do me a favor. Take care, Take care. of my family. Yeah. And in verse 4, watch this. He left the king and stayed with him all the time. And David was in a stronghold. Oh. Amen. So you mean to tell me that you're trying to take care of somebody else when you can hardly take care of yourself? He's in a stronghold, uh -huh. but the proof of his anointing is he still has responsibility over grown folks. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Okay, well, you got to catch out here. Okay, this is proof that your anointing doesn't dismantle a stronghold. I got it. You can be the strongest person around, uh -huh. everybody leaning on you, and yeah. still be caught up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So David has a problem. He's caught up in a stronghold, but he's the leader of the family. Mm. Something yeah. has him by the neck, but he's the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. Something has him and won't let him go, but he's the head of the household. Mm -hmm. He can preach, but he's still going through. All right. He can sing, but he has to be delivered. All right. Oh, he has degrees on the wall, but he's still depressed. Still, still. David leaves the cave with the 400 benefits and tells the king, watch my family uh -huh. until I come out of this situation. Yeah. Did y'all get it? Yeah. <laughs> While I'm in a dark place, don't let the enemy get a hold of my family. Oh. <laughs> Oh, God, don't let my family suffer while I'm in transition. Yeah. yeah. Anybody have a, ever had yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. okay. Why, why are you working on me, Lord? Cover my family. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Notice, he didn't ask the 400. Mm -hmm. He asked the king. Yeah. Did y'all hear? Mm -hmm. He didn't ask Memphis. Mm -hmm. He wasn't on Facebook. He didn't put a text out to group text. He went to one person he knew could cover his family because he couldn't be there, and that was the king. Yeah. Anybody ever had to go to the king on behalf of your family? Well, the king of all kings, the lord of all lords. When 
your kids go to school and you look at the news and other folks are shooting at the school, Lord, cover my family. Come on, come on. I don't need to call nobody else. Jesus, take the wheel. Cover them because I can't be there for them. Yeah. Watch the movies of the text. While I'm in the dark, don't let the enemy take over. Notice now, God's promise was that he would take care of your children while he's working. Amen. I'm so glad that he doesn't push hard. Because we go through something every day. But you still are the head of your family. Your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, everybody in your family will be covered while you're in the dark place. Amen. Aren't you glad that God is good? Yes. Yes. I said, I know that you're not working right now. I know that the doctor came back with a bad report. I know that you got habits. If you just take the request to Jesus, he'll cover your family while you're in a dark place. Yes. Yes. Watch this, y'all. Because of your responsibility, you are the one. God, don't let my family fall apart. Just watch this. Because I'm involved in cave activities. Mm -hmm. Maybe y'all never been there. Okay. I, I got to teach y'all something. If every time you get involved in cave activities, your family go down, your whole lineage will be wiped out. Because mm -hmm. we're not always perfect. Mm -hmm. But God, don't let my imperfection Mess up my family. Amen. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you grew up the way I grew up, you would hear things like this. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. say. Y'all heard it too. <laughs> <laughs> that means I got some imperfections yeah. Yeah, yeah. that I don't want my children growing up with. Yeah, right. Lord, why are you working on me in the cave? Yeah. I want you to take care yeah. of my family. Yeah. You have to go get better and stronger. Watch this. Because your family is dependent on you. Mm -hmm. The enemy has been trying to take you out ever since you were anointed. Amen. Everybody who's in a stronghold, depressed, discontent, and in debt, the devil is alive. Mm -hmm. While I'm going through, Jesus is taking the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Verse 5. It said, the prophet told David, do not remain in the stronghold. Amen. He said, get out of there and watch this and go to Judah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I missed it the first time too. Let me back up a little yellow bus. Mm -hmm. Let me catch out with this. Judah means praise. He said, don't stay in a stronghold. All right. I want you in that cave. Why you're going through, mm -hmm. in order to come out of it, is to give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Okay. That, that's all it's good. Uh, bills hanging over your head. Mm. Kids still crazy. Yeah. Husband still didn't come home last night. Yeah. Yeah. You're still in a bad situation. Amen. But this morning, I woke up yeah. to show you something that was made. Mm. Let me see where did I put it. Oh, there it is. Well, oh. This is the day yeah. that the Lord has made, yeah. and I will rejoice yeah. and be glad in it. Yes. Every yes. single day, you don't have a problem mm. that God can't cover. Amen. Watch this, watch this. I'm talking to somebody who's still in trouble, uh -huh. still got the burden. Yeah. You're still in the cave. But you got a smile on your face. Because you got a sneaky suspicion that everything mm -hmm. is going to be all right. Yes, oh, only one thing changed. What's that? That I learned how to give him glory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't wait until the battle is over. You're going to have to celebrate the victory right yeah. about now. Yeah. Yeah. If you learn to give him glory, he'll give you peace. That passes all understanding. Oh, yeah. Watch this. And it'll make you look crazy in a cave. Yeah. Anybody ever look crazy in a cave? Well. They know what happened to you. Yeah. And they expected for you not to show up. And you still showed up with a smile on your face. Yeah. 
I lost my car, but I caught the bus to church. Yeah. I lost my car, but I caught the bus to work. Yeah. Y'all you know, laughing at me, God is giving me a better car. Yeah. And when I roll through here, I'm just going to say, this is the day well, that the Lord well, has made. Well. I will rejoice and be glad in yeah. it. So I came out of the cave mm -hmm. with my hands lifted up. Yeah. I came out of the cave ready to fight. Yeah. I'm the only one that knows how to fight. Mm -hmm. And I'm clean 400 people yeah. who can't even throw a rock. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give some praise, so much so that when they come out of the cave, yeah. they're going to get rid of the pressure. Yeah. They're going to get rid of their debt. Yeah. They're going to get rid of the complaining spirit. Yeah. Mm. Because I am the leader. Somebody say, I'm the leader. I'm the leader. And I learned it, watch this, in a cave. Yeah. I didn't have to go to school. Right. I don't have no degrees on the wall. Yeah. God put me in a cave. Yeah. And now I feel better. Yeah. Somebody say, so much better. Oh, Since much better. I made my burden down. Well, yeah, I got well, well, All right. I'm going to praise you. Yeah. Before I come out again. Yeah. Yeah. Don't complain about being in the cave. Right. Why is that going to happen? Yeah. Over 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. They put my Jesus yeah. in a cave. Yeah. 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 Somebody said they hung him high. Yeah. They stretched him out. Yeah. They put nails in his hands. Yeah. They pierced him in his side. Yeah. And the Bible said he died. He died. Yeah. Then he died. Yeah. And they made a mistake yeah. because they put him in the cave. Yeah. And all night Friday, he stayed yeah. in that cave. Yeah. All of Sunday, but early. Yeah. Somebody say early. Yeah. Yeah. Sunday morning, yeah. he got up yeah. with all power in his head. Yeah. Somebody say he did it in the cave. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't do it for you. Somebody say he did it. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't work on you in a dark place. Yeah. Why don't you put you in a cave to make you stronger? Yeah. Somebody say, what are you doing? What are you doing? You've never been in a cave, raise your hand and say, what are you doing? What are you doing? You ever act crazy sometimes? Yeah. Somebody say, what are you doing? 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 You're crazy right now. Say, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Thank you.